Welcome back to Too Much Popcorn, the movie review podcast where Jimmy and I talk about movies, a movie we've seen in particular, and break it down, give you the highs, the lows, and ultimately give you our opinion on whether you should watch it or not. The highs, the lows, the mids, the lowers. (laughs) And and the upper (laughs) mids and the lower mids. and A whole spectrum of sort of situations that we're looking at yeah yeah because ultimately that's what this podcast is about you know it's hard to rate a movie on a number scale where you might have a movie that's a four compared to another movie that's a four and you feel that it should be compared slightly higher than that and you know ultimately with your favorite movie you just want to tell people to watch it or not watch it and that's what we're trying to do is we have some movies We really enjoy and we want to let you guys know to watch it. And some movies where we watched it and we're like, oh, no. You mean the the movie we're talking about today on this episode? (sighs) I feel like there has to be a preface of, A, we're going to spoil everything about this film. Because, B, (laughs) I don't know if we preface the episode by saying our opinions on it. You know, our final take on it. I don't I don't think we break the format that much, but oh. look here, people. We're talking about <laughs> Hitman. <laughs> we're talking about Shitman <laughs> 2007. <laughs> the uh Timothy Oliphant fronted picture that is based on the uh Ideos video game series people know and love, and uh who boy. Did we almost just full on not do this episode? (laughs) Yeah, we said I (laughs) don't, I (laughs) don't smios. Let's not. I don't know if we can do this. (laughs) Oh, this movie drove us insane. Oh man, it. You know what? Like I, I have no. Okay, we have the other movies where sometimes we spoil things. This one, I have no problem spoiling things because there's nothing to spoil. There's no, no, that's the thing is like even us talking about the plot, there isn't really one to spoil because it doesn't make any sense. Besides, he's a hitman and he kills people. And if you're going into the film knowing that, you're spoiled. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> he, he, that's what he does. Oh no, the Terminator's gonna terminate. Oh, oh no. no! Yeah, it's so. This being so parked in 2007, and I, I, this is not a film I've ever seen before. This is a fresh, fresh eyes on this sort of heap that exists, and boy, what a heap it is! It it just is so incoherently shot, voiced. The ADR is horrible. The lighting is generally garbage. One tone, Gaussian blur, pre-J.J. Abrams lens flare ass. I don't know what's going on here, folks, but it is one of the most boring to look at films. But you know the one person that didn't phone it in on this one was the squib juice maker on this film (laughs) yeah paint these scenes i the viscera i think they took that guy straight out of total recall froze him for what 12 years and then pulled him out of cryo freezing just to do the squibbing oh a new we have a new video game coming out Uh, that's weird i didn't know we had more than doom (laughs) (laughs) And they're like, yeah, we, we got Doom. You know how bloody Doom is? And that guy was like, oh, that that well, if we made a Doom movie, I'd make so much squibs of those demons and stuff. It's like, okay, well, you're getting ahead of yourself. Here, we'll <laughs> make these people's heads explode. Uh, okay, okay. 
just a first of all uh, timothy oliphant he's he's the guy right he's your boy he's the hitman he runs the film and guess what I don't think he was the best pick. I don't even think he was the right pick at all. He delivers lines as if he's reading them off the back of a <laughs> fucking cardboard box. He he looks like a baby face. Like the bald look on him just does not work. There's there's bound to be a better actor to do that. In 2007, apparently they couldn't top it. Yeah, because he definitely ran it and ran it right into the ground. And... You know, I've seen Timothy Oliphant in things and said, hey, he was OK in that. And I think this is the first time where I've seen him in something and said, hey, he was bad in this. Because <laughs> just you no, know, you're you're absolutely right. I don't think they gave him any direction on what he should do with the character. No, they couldn't have. Because if you had just given it the treatment of Agent 47 from the video games it would have been a very two-dimensional, you know, he is a hitman and re- says things to get a purpose across. But that would have almost been more tolerable. I think they were, like, fearing yeah. that he wasn't going to be likable and relatable. But you know what? Whatever treatment they gave him with, like, his kind of quips <laughs> and almost sort of James Bond-esque charm. It just, yeah, kind of. the What's the a smirk? Like, almost a smirk in yeah. most of the shots he's present in. And he would say things where he's, like, trying to be cute, but you just want to fucking tie a bowling ball to his leg and throw him in the ocean. <laughs> he can swim, and he'd get away, and he'd find you, sir, and he'd build, he'd burn the building around you. <laughs> yeah, he would set up an elaborate trap with a mine to a door that would explode as he jumps out the window. With we'll, a rope. We'll get, get to a, that. We'll rope. fucking get to that. Yeah. Okay, so it's funny that you actually mentioned his like lack of flat delivery, because I think there is something in a movie I've seen, possibly, you know, the cold hitman robotic unfeeling unemotional sort of thing you can sell that in the beginning of a film and then have a character like have a moment where you're like whoa you're like you john wicked me like you have a, a, another emotion that's crazy and in this one they're like no hitman in this one is uh i don't know he's got a joie de vivre about him. you know he <laughs> yeah. really he really likes to shake things up and really hang out with this one I'm sorry, Olga Kirilenko, you're you're not in this movie to be good either. <laughs> you and Timothy have nothing, no chemistry. <laughs> there, there's supposed to be some sort of relationship. I don't know if it's fatherly to, to daughterly or like <laughs> I, if it's creepy if it's that, but it kind of is that. I don't know if it's girlfriend, boyfriend, you know, it fully fails in every single way but i'm glad olga that you got away from this film and you know you made something of yourself quantum of solace that's a good movie you know yeah. well i don't know if it's a good movie but you made it out of hitman and i don't think timothy did i don't think he did yes he was in the mandalorian but come on that character that's a that's a tv show yeah and also this was a feature film also that character it wasn't a feature film <laughs> was it a feature? <laughs> was it even a film? <laughs> oh, it featured uh, excessive violence, uh, incoherent plot lines, a lot of bad Russian accents, like worse than Brother Boris style, just like full on incoherent, nonsensical, <laughs> you know, like just not a good. Uh, they didn't. They didn't. Get, they didn't give the guy from Lost any sort of. Inf- like instruction on what he was supposed to do. Yeah. They're <laughs> just like, ah, you're, you're in the set. It's fine. Just talk however you want to talk. Yeah. They sent him to his accent class. He got one day in and they were like, you got it. That's <laughs> it. 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 <laughs> this was actually too expensive. Yeah. Sorry. Whoops. That's where all our budget <laughs> for the whole movie went. All $20 of it. Oh, <laughs> hey, there's budget in this film. You can, you can see. <laughs> There's the explosions, the squibs. There's a lot of set dressing and uh, guns. Like just sort of, they just put them everywhere. Yeah, but also like nothing really stands out. Okay, 
yeah, let's 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 hit that real quick. Cause so I've played most of I've played all of the new Hitman games, and I've played most of like the older ones. And something that always like prevails in each of the Hitman games is these like locations where you know you set up some elaborate trap to get your person where you want them to you know get your perfect kill off. And I think that element kind of was portrayed in this where like you know he he does some recon the first day and finds out where his target's gonna be and then figures out how to get that guy into the bathroom and it's like okay that kind of felt uh pretty hitman-y but like where's he doing this and it was like in some three-star diner of a restaurant <laughs> where it's just like this could be anything and you know in the newest release of hitman they have the you know their version of the burj al khalif and it's like that's cool this yeah. was not. Yeah. I, I feel like I, I've barely played any Hitmans. I think there was a free one that came out. You could buy episodes for it or whatever. And I played like the free one. And I was like, cool. I kind of get it. It's goofy. Love it. And definitely the thing with Hitman is you're entering this location that is filled with hazards and people to kill and all these sort of things that make it this unique environment. And there is absolutely nothing conveyed in the film that matches the tone of that. They're essentially just like, here's a flat and one of the most boring environments of all time. We keep you in Russia for so long in this film and we don't make it interesting at all. And they're like, hey, did you know there's trains there's like subway systems and you're like yeah but you go to like an abandoned one that's under construction and it's basically like you could have this fight amidst hitmen you know multiple five four hitmen in that one train fight anywhere and you chose to have it <laughs> yeah. in the dingiest train stupid like unexplained why anyone's there uh, why the trap was set for this specific location. Nothing in this film makes any sense because it, first of all, it starts with a, f a flash forward oh. to the present telling you that he's in this guy's house and you're supposed to care about this guy now because the hitman's there. But guess what? It flashes back to three months before that <laughs> for the entire film and never returns until the end. Worse even is it flashes back to the three months before in one location where it kind of like sets up this thing that he did to Africa. These, yeah. It sets up this thing that he did some to some African warlords. And then you have the inspector who's like, Oh, he's such a bad guy because he's killing <laughs> warlords. And you're like, God, I fucking love this guy. <laughs> you're like, That's a bad guy? I thought those were good guys. And then it skips forward some indeterminate amount of time to sometime between three months and that time that he's in that guy's house, where it's like, oh, It was what? two days prior. <laughs> yeah. And the fucking inspector sets it up with he's killed so many people here's one of his kills and so you kind of like think did we go back in time further or are we now further forward to the back i don't it know it could be either it really could be it really could actually have been. no it is determined it is determined well i don't know you no know, I, I don't know now i don't think it's they, not yeah it's actually not because he gets away i guess right so then he could have gone to Niger afterwards. Oh, man. Yeah. That sucks. Dude. And then three months at some point, <laughs> he, uh, yeah, the Russian thing happened six years ago. And uh, then three months ago, he was, <laughs> was spotted the Niger in Niger. thing, yeah. Yeah. And then he shows up in the guy's house at the beginning and end of the movie. Yes. I think we figured it out. We've solved the case. We've um, done more than the inspector did. The hitman. <sighs> oh, yeah. And, and let's talk more about that, because my favorite part of uh, the hitman series 
just so happens to be the inspector that follows him around the entire time. And you don't actually play Hitman. You play the, the inspector who's following. Yes. You know, that's that's the much more my favorite character, believable and acceptable story that I care about with a title such as Hitman. Not only do we follow the Interpol inspector, but he's also got his good friend. <laughs> who is the most expository fucking <laughs> spewing character of all time and comes into sh- like multiple, multiple times comes into shots with photographs or files <laughs> or items and is like, Hey, <laughs> look at this. Uh, I got this for you. And you're like, Oh my God, please, sir. Yeah. And then Jimmy, quick question. What was his name? <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> No, Jenkins. It was Jenkins. <laughs> That's right. Thank it you. It was Jenkins. Okay, I did absolutely forget that it was Jenkins. It was Jenkins. He he played the Jenkins role flawlessly in terms of just endlessly providing us with information that we did not need because guess what? The hitman already was the guy doing all the things and killing all the people. And they're all like, he killed a guy again. Look. They're dead in the bathroom. And you're like, yeah, we saw him do that. <laughs> yeah. What do you uh, what do you want us to take from this information? Should I that be he's sad? Doing his job? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. oh boy. It's also weird that they decided to cut in. Okay. There's a lot of timeline stupidity around this because I think the intro sequence is sort of establishing the organization, correct? It's like brainwashing these kids, barcoding them, tattooing, shaving their heads, all this kind of fun stuff. Bad footage of kids doing judo and stuff like that. And you're like, okay, cool. The hitman was an indoctrinated teen who learned how to kill real good. But there's also some weird shots in there that look like the teen's uprising (laughs) <laughs> like like they're like we'll take over the organization from our guards or whatever and you're like okay so did the organization fail and he isn't actually like with them i don't really know there isn't enough information to go off of here so the, his alliances are not known his origin is nebulous and i feel like if you wanted us to care about this guy give us no information so we can sort of put ourselves in his shoes like a like a video game character right the less you know the better or give us the whole thing show us show him being born he's bald he gets the barcode at age three and then he grows into it right there's there's something about how they were trying to convey this weird backstory That doesn't matter in the games and it doesn't matter in the film. Why did they decide to do it that way at all? I think it suffers from like movie telling disease where it feels it has to give backstory and lore. But is that almost like film? Is that like video game to film problem where they're like, well, the video game is able to convey all this information with text files and intro cutscenes, So we have to (laughs) we have to put it in the movie. I I think so. I think it is more with video games than anything else. And it might be that partly like they think that the audience came to see these specific things translated onto screen and they had to put them in there. Yeah. As like not a huge fan of Hitman, I'm like, look, I get it. It's a third person game. You go around shooting people and throwing shoes at them and then like (laughs) strangling them and then you win the game, you you know, you win the level and you leave. And that's the extent of which I care about Hitman. And so when they deviate from that in the film immediately to just be like, he dons two disguises. He generally is just sort of chilling and then people come after him. That's not what yeah. he's for. And his favorite way to kill people in this movie isn't, you know, the stealth and the setting up cool traps and stuff. It's the gunfights and the judo fights and the, you know, big racing uh, running around the hotel. It's it's the stuff that just doesn't exist in the games that they thought, you know, well, every other action movie has these gunfights and stuff. 
we have to do it too. You know, they didn't think like, hey, maybe we can set ourselves apart from the just bonkers stupidity of 2007's movies <laughs> and do our own thing. You know, they said, hey, we watched Van Helsing. We watched Underworld. We can do that too. Yeah, I think that's... Uh it's very indicative of the time where you're like, oh, well, it's got to be balls to the wall action. We can't have a sort of contemplative hero, anti-hero type character. People don't want that. The The theater will riot if <laughs> Hitman does not kill over 16,000 people in this film. You know, yeah. People won't come to see our movie if we don't give them crazy action sequences and gunfights and it's like spoiler alert hot take alert nobody came to see your movie but it is very interesting when you look at so many other video game <laughs> movies <laughs> that just like either just shit all over what they were given in the way of like what the video game is that was right. worded so poorly but <laughs> You know, it was the most. It was the most <laughs> video game. You like turned into an NPC describing something. Yeah, the video game it provides for the film. Yeah, but like, you even look at Doom, right? Where they were just like, "Hey, so it's set on Mars, and then there's a portal and some Don't bad." Don't get me started on <laughs> fucking Doom. Dude. Oh, remember how they couldn't fucking settle on whether it was demons or aliens? <laughs> yes, make it one. But somehow Jews. that movie did more to satisfy <laughs> the original idea of Doom than this movie did. This movie they were li it? literally, I would say so. This movie they were literally like. He's a hitman, and his name's Agent 47. That's about it. That's true. I think the for how bad the Doom movie is, it does satisfy the, like, alien vibe, right? Like, scary in a Mars base plus gore, horror, and then you get the very ultra-gratifying, like, first-person sequence at the very, very end. And yeah. in this one, you get maybe two shots where it looks like the video game and then ultimately is like they utilized those shots to set up loading screens in the film. But but to be fair, you know what made this movie so much better than Doom is that scene where he comes crashing through the window and there's those two kids who are playing Hitman and it was like, Look at how cheeky I am. I broke the fourth wall. I'm in the game. They're looking at the back of the character's head that is also my head, which with, with which has a barcode. Suck on that, Doom. Yeah. I bet you didn't have any aliens in a room playing Doom somewhere. <laughs> oh, I, boy. I think that was, what, 20 minutes into the movie, and that was where it I was said... barely barely any time in the movie that we were just given the go ahead to just go off yeah. <laughs> on how bad this film is. It, it was absolutely at that point that I said, I don't care what they do with the rest of this movie. That will not redeem this movie. Egregious. For me. Yeah. And, and not even service of, any plot line or even sort of a cheeky beyond the cheeky fourth wall. I broke into a room. They're playing my video game. I leave the room. They don't react at all because video games are suck you into a different reality. There's no, there's nothing beyond. We put the game in the movie. That was it. Yeah. Yeah, it would, what a waste of everyone's time! It would absolutely be like if you went back and watched Lord of the Rings, and on Bilbo's shelf in the Hobbiton is the Lord of the Rings book, and you're just <laughs> like, "What is this?" Not even that. He has like the full chronology. He's got the Silmarillion up there. He's like, "Yeah, I got collected them all. I love them. <laughs> I love these." I, he pats them. He's like, "Oh." I love these books. Call me a bit of a Tolkien head. Yeah, yeah. I love that guy. Yeah. Yeah, it was that kind of stuff where it was just like, 
this is not your regular video game movie. This is more a 2007's action movie that somehow got the license for this game and they said, slapped it on. Yeah. I, 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 it, it has MacGuffin syndrome where you could literally take his title out of it and put in a different title and name. You know, if they called him, oh, Jason Bourne, you know, it would have fucking worked. And, and to go off of that, you, and you kind of mentioned this earlier, I think it was his the the bad guys that he's battling in this, not the agency he came from. The, they called themselves what the organization something like that bro that is one of the biggest cinema sins in my mind hot take alert <laughs> you can give me a zoom session for a whole movie and i will love it so much more than a movie that makes their whole antagonist organization just called the organization the syndicate company. the company Yo, if you can't have just a little bit of artistic idea in your mind to come up give with a, a cool name. Give it a cool name. Yeah, seriously. Black Mamba. I don't give a fuck. That's way cooler. What's the uh, what's the thing in Sam Fisher? Like Third Echelon. Third Echelon's fucking sick, dude. Yeah. Name your shit Third Echelon. Fourth <laughs> Echelon. Fourth I don't echelon. care. Rip yeah. it right off. Fucking New Dawn. I don't care. Old Dawn. Yeah. Rising Dawn. <laughs> Put it in a fucking. We're not. <laughs> look, we're not telling you to use AI, but just do something. Yeah, it it is. It is your movie. You have the freedom to make the choices, even if you have some producer or whatever telling you that it's got to be called the organization. You can say no. Look at all these horrible movies that have done that. I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna you know put some art and style into my movie. Yeah. Look. Okay. I don't know at the time if Eidos was like trying to lord over this film or something, or if they were really hands off. But if I'm talking about an Eidos like franchise, like Deus Ex or something, there is so many sci fi ass names and organizations that have names or in those games that are legitimate and cool and fit in the sort of world building that they establish in those games. And I'm sure Hitman establishes something less vague than just the org. And if they don't make it up in the film, fix it because you can do that. And I'd also probably let you do it. Yeah. It, it does seem like they were very hands off because if you're looking at this video game series where up to, until this movie, I think they had either three or four games out at that point alone from like 2003 right. to 2007. It was almost like a yearly franchise. So clearly it was popular and it was something that people wanted. And it would make sense that if they had put the legwork into making a good movie, <laughs> It could have also been like Hitman 2, Hitman 3, Hitman Revelations. Something that they could have put out more sequels, and yet they you know, were just... You know, and I think I did see some YouTube short... It wasn't a short. It was it was in the heyday when people, you know, everyone was trying to make their movie on YouTube for, like, a budget. And there was some Hitman short that came out that was sick, and it followed just the Hitman in a singular location and it was it worked perfectly it was like what you would expect in terms of like a a short thesis on what your film would be about and i was like i've seen that and it was it was long ago but i remember it being like yeah here we go you follow him he dips into a closet and he's sitting in there and you get like a shot of somebody walking by and he like grabs him and then Hitman comes out in like a beach, you know, he's in like a Hawaiian shirt or something like, hey, I'm here to party. I got a straw hat on. You know, there was there's something funny about Hitman games where you can take people's identities and then people stare at you weird and they're like, were you were you the chef? Are you the chef? You're in the chef uniform and you're like, uh, uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm the chef. And you're like, not every film has to be funny. I understand that. But Hitman games are inherently sort of a funny 
mechanically sound game in which you can do weird stuff that leads to weird outcomes of weird NPC behavior and all that kind of stuff. And this film just fully was like, no, he does about three disguises. <laughs> he always, always shoots people in the head. Just a hundred percent. Just, just, he's a perfectly accurate machine. When he misses, he misses on purpose. And we've, uh, he's a sexual kind of guy. We've made him very <laughs> sexual. He can't get boners and he has no balls, but he's very sexual and very horny. And he really wants to fuck Olga Kirilenko. Uh, <laughs> in this film and we as the filmmakers want you the audience to also fu want to fuck Olga Kirilenko because we just uh, her tits are out uh, half the film and <laughs> and if you don't like that then what are we doing here and you're like look people thank you thanks I guess just put a, put everything away that you've said and fix this film <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take a little break. Oh, we're back. Still talking about Hitman. <laughs> Wouldn't it be wild if we just started talking about another film after the break? Or, or just the games? <laughs> or just the games. Yeah, those games are good. I'll I'll review those. Uh, I'd have to play them more. You, you know, I, I the other thing that gets me about this movie is in a way that was almost different than other plot lines that don't make sense. This movie just didn't make sense with its plot line. Yeah. You know, it, it sets up beyond the whole stupid timeline boner that it gave us. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just timeline boner <laughs> yeah it gets to the point where it sets up russia and he's there on some mission to kill the president because that's what his syndicate wants him to go do and so he's like beep bop boop i'm a hitman that's what i do and he takes a shot kills a rando bodyguard which if you've ever played the video games, you would know that you're not supposed to kill even the bodyguards because that's going to get you less money. That's negative money. Yeah. yeah. So stupid there. Then In perfect contract completion. Yeah. Then he kills. He, he even did it in the suit. He did the suit playthrough with the sniper only to kill a, an extra. Like, come on. You wouldn't do that. <laughs> Ugh. All right. So he, he gets his target, right? And then it's revealed the next day that, oh, his target's still alive. But Hitman's like, I shot him in the head. How's he still alive? <laughs> that, uh, beep, bop, boop. That's not what happened when shooting head. His brain, <laughs> his brain go over that guy's face. <laughs> they show it multiple times. <laughs> yeah. They gave us three different angles on that guy's brains covering his face. The arterial fluids. Yeah. <laughs> I think and they so, said that phrase four times. <laughs> oh, my God. You're right. So then it gets into this like just convoluted mess of like his organization telling him that he didn't do it right and that Olga Kirilenko saw him do it, even though it was done in front of a huge crowd of people. They're yes. like, she specifically Sorry, saw you, you have do to kill this. 50 other people who saw you do this. Yeah. And so they're nope, like, just her. And he's go like, kill her. Suspicious. Yeah. And so he goes to kill her and then she like makes eye contact with him. And he's like, she didn't recognize me. Clearly, she doesn't know that I'm the one who did it. It's like he was in a building 50 <laughs> miles away. Yeah. Of course, she didn't see him do it. Yeah. Oh, and then it he, he's like, I must protect her because people are going to come and try and kill her. I think uh, I think that was his logic. Yeah, and he's then the worst the, hitman ever. Okay, because he's in that building like a hundred miles away with a sniper rifle, and he gets away scot free. You know, the guards <laughs> are like, oh, "Where's the shots coming from? Probably up in that building." I don't know if I could tell. And then he's like, "Biggest explosion of my gun <laughs> to really reveal the location of where my bullets came from." Yeah, <sighs> yeah. He puts his gun in a suitcase, which then explodes. With a Be big explosion. Because, you know, that's how it does in the games, clearly. 
Ugh. Well, yeah, you never you never see it, but after you complete it, and you know you're on your phone with Olivia, whoever's giving your orders. She's like, good work, Hitman, Agent 47. <laughs> Behind you is large explosions of every weapon. <laughs> Any innocent left alive is also being exploded behind you. But don't worry, that's off screen. Yeah. And then that's the other thing, too, is like whoever he's talking. So he's got this laptop that he's in communications with his syndicate with. And after he completes his mission, you know, they tell him they're like, Oh, your target is still alive. You didn't do it right. And he's like, I did it right. And then they're like, okay, well, you no longer work for us. Goodbye. (laughs) (laughs) And then they just, I think, fire him. They ghost him. (laughs) Yeah. And then, like, this made no sense either. The lady who he's talking to on the laptop calls him. And she's like. Not with a robot voice. Yeah. With her human voice her on a landline. Yes. And in she, Russia. In Russia. She calls him up on the on the old telly. On the jolly old telly. On jolly old uh, comrade telephone. Yes. And she tells him, oh dear, hitman, people are coming for you. And I would get in so much trouble if I told you this. And then she just hangs up on him. And then that's it. That is all you get for his syndicate trying to contact him. Which made zero sense. No. What's worse is I think you had a good idea where you're like, look, his contact through the laptop is Mika, Olga Kirilenka. Like, what if that happened? What if Mika had more of some reason to be in the film, right? She was a hitman. She has a barcode under her head of hair. Yeah. She... She had more information. No, she's the she's in the film because sex sells. Yeah, they showed her boobs and her boobs did nothing for this movie. She tried to actively have sex with him and he was like, I don't know how to do that. (laughs) I'm going to stab you with a poison anyways. (laughs) Yeah, so I know we, we were both coming up with ideas of like, how can we make it make more sense to have her in this movie? And whether you have him be like, or you have her rather be the person who's running his missions or some secret hitman who's out to kill him. You know, those could have been possibilities, but the movie was just like, nope, 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 nope. Nope. The organization just wants to kill her because she is aware of the president existing and having doubles. And so not only are there multiple attempts on her life that agent 47 stops, he doesn't even know why he's doing it anymore. <laughs> he's just like, he's looking down at the dead other agent hitman on the ground. He's like, oh, I shouldn't have tried to shoot this lady. I, I possibly have feelings for. I don't really know what feelings are. I haven't established that I'm a sexual being, but they really tried to sell it in the movie that I'm a sexual, sexual, charming, sexual being. Yeah. And that's the other thing with the plot of this movie where they later reveal that the president was replaced with this double and it it just makes no sense why they need to kill hitman and Olga Kirilenko because they know that he's a double, but what's so bad about that? He's going to ruin Russia. (laughs) They never like set up like here's his evil plan. They were just like, He's been replaced with a double. There was one line. Aaron, I'm sorry you missed it. It was the president. Either he was newly elected or something. He had made some stance. And it was more moderate than the organization Uh. or whoever replaced him in the end wanted it to be. So they replaced him with a puppet who would do the, you know, egregious violent you know heavy-handed sort of thing instead of the moderate approach to politics and that was one line i swear it was maybe even in the the scrolling of a (laughs) newscast somewhere in the background but it wasn't good it wasn't sufficient for the whole thing to happen the way it did no because it also makes no sense 
when they could have literally just hired Hitman to kill the former president and then replace him, replace the president with a, like, not body double, but just somebody else who represents their ideals. Yeah. Who's in power and is like, hey. They have to vote for that guy? Hey, if they're doing assassinations, I'm sure they can rig an election. I I think it'd be easier. (laughs) I feel like that whole thing would have been easier, and then they wouldn't have Hitman being like, but I... I, I killed him, and now we have a double? I don't know. I, I'm almost more convinced, too, that Hitman was just more concerned about his, like, job reputation, where he's like, no, I killed that guy. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm I a Hitman. I killed I'll him. I'll kill I, both of them. Yeah, I know how to kill guys. I'll kill him, his whole family, and anyone related to him. Yeah, look, I'll kill this guy right now. They're like, no, you don't have to prove it. For, and he's like, no, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, and so he's that, just that out had to kill to the it. double. It was just his... It was just to make himself feel better. He was like, hey, you said I failed? Oh, fuck you. I didn't. I did it. I'm good at killing. I'm good at sex and killing. (laughs) I'm so good at being a sexual being and also a ruthless murderer. (laughs) (sighs) Yikes. I, ah, dude, this movie is almost more like, I, I would have almost been okay if, like, at the very end... They just had some rando 13 year old wake up and they're like, he's like, oh, that was such a cool dream. I'm going to be the best hitman when I grow up. Not even that. This was just like the kid played the game all night. He fell asleep, had a dream that he was the hitman. That would suck so much. But it would be better than what they gave us. No, it couldn't be. It could be. Okay, the best part, here we go. No, so riffing off of that, <laughs> the whole film happens. And then as soon as he gets out of the Interpol situation he was caught in, you know, the CIA bails him out or whatever, it does the weird glass transition. And we're back in the hotel room with the kids <laughs> playing the game. And they're like, wow, what a cool mission. And then they high five and then the fucking credits roll. <laughs> oh. oh, it felt so real. Oh, see, but that would be so fucking funny. Is they're like, wow, that felt so real. It's like it really happened. And then it pans over and their window is still all fucking crushed. (laughs) (laughs) When he went through. Oh, yes. And then it goes back into the TV. And it's and it's Hitman facing the camera, and you're like, that's weird. He shouldn't be doing that. And then he gives you like a little thumbs up, like finger bang. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. It's just such garbage, dude. Yeah. I I also love how, like, they had... So they don't just have him being a hitman in this movie. You know, they, they send, like, eight or ten other hitmen after him and Olga Kirilenko to kill him. And all at the same time, you have the inspector who's like, no, I only care about the main hitman and all these other one are dead, but I care about him. What the heck are these guys doing here? <laughs> yeah. And then at the very end, hitman ends up in his house with a guy who kind of looks like him, which spoiler alert is all of them. And then he's like, he's like, yeah, there's three of these guys in under your basement. Yeah. He's like, tell the cops that hitman's dead. And then the inspector's like, oh, okay. When, like, really, Hitman could have just, at any point after he killed one of those other Hitmen, been like, hey, tell the cops Hitman's dead. (laughs) This one dead Hitman (laughs) that I left in the subways of Petersburg, (laughs) that was fucking me, dude. (laughs) And they're like, no, they're going to scan his barcode. They'll know. Yeah. And also, like, you have all these other Hitmen, and you got... The inspector being like, hey, this one hitman's killed like a hundred people. I'm going to stop him. <laughs> what are those other guys doing? What have they been doing? Killing hundreds of people elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> or have they all just been like kind of gaslighting him where they're all attributing all of their kills to him. So yeah. he gets placed with the blame. Well, that's that's kind of it, right? Technically, if they're all part of the organization, the organization's just setting him up the whole time, and they're trying to kill him with other hitmen. But because they're in a, inefficient at being hitmen, they all die to the only hitman who ever <laughs> kills people. <laughs> uh. and they're all trained the same way, and they all have the same code of conduct where they're like, oh, we'll fight like gentlemen, knives, big, <laughs> long <laughs> knives only. <laughs> Slappers only. 
<laughs> slappers only. And hey, no extra lights. Turn that shit off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just Dude, don't it, know. It, if you want to talk about inefficient, <laughs> that last... Do I? Yes. That last little bit where he's in the church and he's up in that little church tower uh, and he's got the one guy hostage. I believe it's the second president. He's got him the, hostage. He's got the face on him and the putting the face on him hurt. <laughs> yeah. And then the helicopter, this helicopter comes out from outside up to the level where he's at and just mini guns the whole room <laughs> spraying tons of bullets doesn't kill him like you can still obviously see him through the hole of this you know blown apart wall that the helicopter he made like a bookcase or something yeah I, I the helicopter could easily be like oh there he is but <laughs> <laughs> but they're like just you know they go they do the whole like two minute sequence where they're mowing the fucking the third floor down and then they stop like you know it's winding down and then they hear like a, <laughs> oh, what the? F-? And they're like, oh, there he is. Hey, it's get him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you can like see him through the hole in the wall. Helicopter's like, oh, there he is. And then they just fly away. And it was just like, our work here is done. <laughs> I don't know. Some board exec was like, we got to have a helicopter come in and spray bullets everywhere. Because that's what Hitman does. And it's like, no, that's. No, actually. That you're thinking of like a Call of Duty or I don't know, you're thinking of a different game franchise. Yeah. Give me literally any other game franchise and put that in there. Doom. Put that in Doom. Put it in Doom. Guess what? Demons are riding it in the helicopter. <laughs> or aliens. I don't know. Pick one. Yeah. Can't be both. Oh man. Alright. We gotta we gotta get down to brass tacks. So yes. ultimately, Jimmy. Give me your oh, opinion. What could it be? <laughs> I'm I'm curious. I I'd like to see where this is going. No, do not watch <laughs> Hitman 2007. I don't want you ever to watch this. Please. <laughs> hmm. What do you think, Our, Aaron? <laughs> spoiler alert, folks. I think Jimmy wants you to watch it. <laughs> Please don't. Uh. We've subjected ourselves to this film for you, so that you don't have to. It's trash. <laughs> you know, 2007, I was like somewhere between 13 and 15. And I got to think like, what other movies was I watching at this time that I thought was just like the bee's knees. And, you know, I mentioned like Van Helsing earlier. Cause I, I, I liked that movie when I was a kid and now I watch it and I'm like, well, I won't give you my opinion on that one. Cause <laughs> we'll, we'll watch that one. We'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're signing us up for Van Helsing? October, baby. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, God. So I, I look at those other movies. Resident Evil, Doom, uh, not Blood Rain, but uh, National Underworld. National Treasure. National Treasure. Babe, Pig in the City. 28 Weeks Later. <laughs> Great Muppet Caper. And this movie is so similar to all those movies that I just listed. Number 23. No country for old men. Wait, actually, that, that's a little different. 310 uh, to Yuma, the remake came out. In 2007? 2007. Oh, that's a good movie. Disturbia. Oh, God, Golden Compass. Oh. Oh, Beowulf. hey oh. Hey, see? Loved that one. <laughs> that was garbage. Shooter. <laughs> oh, Planet Terror came out. 2007, that's dope. Yeah. <gasps> Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium was 2007. Dude. Ocean's 13. I don't think I've seen that one, actually. <laughs> I am legend across the universe. That's all I'm hey, getting right now. Hey, you know but what? Two, 2007 was a good year for movies. Not this uh, one. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, Brass Tax. Don't watch this movie, folks. Please. God. I just listed a couple of movies that you should actually watch. Yo, I won't say watched, which ones. <laughs> we watched <laughs> We watched Moonfall last week, folks. And <sighs> that was leagues better than this, this movie. Still a not watch, just to specify. We are, we are never going to change our opinions on it. But yeah. there is an internal ranking. 
And this movie that didn't bother to give me the backstory of a character in the form of as a foreign exchange student (laughs) or plot devices such as the oxygen's coming back. This movie was so much worse. So, so much worse. And just don't watch it. It's such a waste of time. It does exist in this weird bubble where the tropes that it does do are so ingrained in that sort of, it was probably like a 10 year, like five to 10 year period where you get the beat for beat, unnecessary sexualization of this character that is like, if you're trying to sexualize them, make them more important to the plot so that they're not just an item. The techno D and B bullshit soundtrack credits theme song the stupid unlikable protagonist just there's like all these beats and you can name if you get the details out you can name so many films and incomprehensible visual effects such as the flashing as the guy's oh, running down no, the, the tunnel. effects yeah the speed ramping the <laughs> effects in the hallway the Oh, man, there were so many weird choices. Yeah, think about it, and you've seen it in at least one other thing, I promise you. Where they're trying to hide a shot that didn't work or an effect that didn't work or a shot that they deemed was too boring in some way. So they were like, we'll fix it. Just make it literally flash white as if you're (laughs) having a heart attack. (laughs) (laughs) So that the scene is more interesting or speed ramp it so that he looks like he goes through the window faster and therefore it makes sense velocity wise as to why he lands so far into the room so that it can pan over and look at the hitman on the video game screen. (sighs) Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck this movie. You know, if you are listening to this podcast right now and you're somebody who did any bit of a part of this movie, if you were the costumer, (laughs) if you were the costumer, if you were the the best boy, if you were key grip number four and you're listening to our review and you're like, hey, this is the proudest moment of my life. You reevaluate your life. (laughs) Jimmy's words, not mine. (laughs) <laughs> I I just want to say good on you for being proud of something because we're not uh, full stop full stop just <laughs> good on you for being proud of something <laughs> thanks so much for listening to too much popcorn review us on your favorite thing you know Spotify or Apple podcasts and we'll see you again next next week for the next review of whatever movie we decide to watch that week yeah if you have any suggestions go ahead drop them down in the comments we love suggestions we love to see what people think we should watch yeah if you got something that you think is a watch let us know and we'll see if we confer if you got something that you think's not a not watch go ahead put that down there too troll us and we'll see if what we think of it because it might be good <laughs> they're like oh this person really wants us to watch I don't know, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but like a different one? Yeah. Okay, I guess so. Uh, But thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.